Well, I've been traveling around Flurfia for a while now and I came across this guy. He seems to have a penchant for completely failing to understand magnetism. In a prior video, he challenged people to demonstrate that a bar magnet inside a ball could reproduce the magnetic field that we observe on Earth. Now, firstly, this is silly because it's not an accurate representation as the current established view within the scientific community is that the Earth's magnetic field is caused by rotating molten metal. But ignoring that, I suppose that a bar magnet inside a ball could be considered considered a reasonable approximation. Enter MC Toon, who obliged by taking a stack of disc magnets and putting them inside a ball and demonstrated with a compass that the field is pretty close to what we observe on Earth. In typical Fleur fashion, this fellow rejected a very simple demonstration by asserting that a stack of magnets is not the same as a single bar magnet. You guys, another little lesson on magnetism and how magnets work. This would be a bar magnet. Big positive, big negative north south large and large you can cut it in half and create two bar magnets yep north south north south but when you put them on top of one another you do not have one magnet again when you put these two together it doesn't become this again unless you weld it or create you know fuse it together like weld it and create one piece again stacking two magnets together doesn't make one again you can cut one in half and make two but you can't stick two magnets together and make one again okay unless you weld it create one piece this is the field of a stack stack magnets positive negative positive negative yes it will be positive at the top of the stack and negative at the bottom but it will not be this a fucking bar magnet is one magnet now this came onto my radar and passed my what can we learn from this mistake test and figured that this would be a great opportunity to talk about my favorite subject which is magnetism we start with considering what happens to a magnet which has a north and a south pole when we cut it in half. The result is that we have two magnets with both north and a south pole. We then continue chopping them in half and find that every time we end up with more magnets which have north and south poles. Eventually we have cut the magnet down to the smallest unit and we find that it still has a north and a south pole. Turns out that you can't separate the poles. Magnets are dipoles, meaning that they always have a north and a south pole. Unlike electrical charges, magnetic monopoles cannot exist. This is embodied in Gauss's law for magnetism. So what is a dipole? Well, let's consider a monopole, which looks like this. And we'll call this the north pole with the field radiating outwards. We can then also take a south pole with the field radiating inwards. Or the other way around, it doesn't actually matter. As long as we understand that, they do the opposite thing. We then add the two together to get a dipole. And the key point here is that the fields created by each pole obey superposition. That is, the vector sum of the fields at each point gives the total field. So, time for a quickie around vectors. A vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction, and we can take this vector, which has two components. It has some direction along the x-axis and some direction along the y-axis. The magnitude is then given by Pythagoras' theorem. We then take another vector, which has some components along x and along y. And if we were to add the two, we add the two x components and the two y components separately to get the x and y components of the new vector. Now, when we do this for the two monopoles, we get this field. And then we bring them close together, so we get this. And we bring them infinitely close together to get the magnetic field produced by a single magnetic dipole. Now, this dipole, in essence, is a tiny bar magnet. Bar magnets are made up of a very large number of these dipoles, so we can add them together. And this gives the field for this larger bar magnet. So we can see that the field of a bar magnet is the vector sum of the field due to each fundamental unit in the material. Please note that I use the word unit rather than atom because a lot of the times the magnetic properties of a material are due to slightly more complex configurations. But it then stands to reason that when you stack two magnets on top of each other, the resultant field is the vector sum of the fields of the individual magnets. So let's see if that is the case. And yet, that seems pretty reasonable to me. However, some people have bemoaned my lack of practical demonstration, so I have dug up a compass and some magnets and figured out that I would try the magnetic field of a single bar magnet and then a pair of stacked bar magnets. And yep, that all checks out. The fields look pretty similar. Now, 
That chap also insisted on demonstrating the field lines around a ball. Now, I can't be bothered to try and find a ball to determine the field directions along each point, but I'm very busy at the moment. So we can just settle for a cross section of a ball and assume that the system is rotationally symmetric about the long axis of the magnet. Now these results are pretty consistent with the Earth's magnetic field, which also leads to a fun fact. Compasses need to be balanced for the range of latitudes in which they are used due to the fact that there is a varying downward component to the magnetic field. Now that person is not going to accept this demonstration because of, well, reasons. But I'm sure that MC Toon will persist and try his best to make sure that we stop hearing from that guy.